So what kind of red flags work for you that's not counterproductive? Just, I mean, I think they're a warning for me. It's just, all right, a red flag, keep it in the back, you know, but don't focus on it. Don't make it your central being. Oh, red flags, hypervigilance, got to get the armor, got to do this, do that. Just keep it in the back. Just, you know. Yeah, unless it's relationships and then they should always be ignored. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's what I do too. Like when it comes to just random people at work or like people I'm going to be friends with, I look out for the red flags. And if they're really bad, then I kind of double check myself like, oh crap, do I do that too? And if I am pretty sure I don't, then I'm like, okay, this person's not going to be my friend. But if it's a relationship, I'm like, I love you. It's messed up. Yeah. Let's step on the gas. <laughs> Part of red flags is they're um, somewhat invisible. It's not like they have a face. It's not like they're they're say, they have something that says abuser on their forehead, right? So you have to read nonverbals, or you have to read your intuition to sort of get the red flags, or you have to be able to spot the behavior in live fire and part of the challenge with abusers manipulators is they hide their intention is that pretty agreeable so since they hide their yeah. intention it's hard to spot the red flags because they're trying to hide it <laughs> but then if someone's just anxious and cautious they might be just anxious so they're not dangerous so someone could just be a little bit more guarded or, or passive they might also look guard uh, hidden just like an abuser so then it's tricky so this video can sort of cover a good strategy for uh, abusers and also sort of cover how silent abuse or silence can be abusive or weaponized and we'll see if we can unpack that more. So then it's not just about red flags. It's about how can you use some of these tools so that you can be more active in your relationships instead of just always running away from red flags. Because I don't run very fast and I'm lazy. So I'd rather just go sideways. Throw someone in front of me. But I didn't advocate that. I just said that. Scapegoating is not a good thing, unless it works for you. <laughs> yes, an ex-friend of mine uh, basically became an enemy after our friendship dissolved. She tried to turn all my friends against me, she'd send multiple packages to my house, she attacked my character, it was honestly really traumatic. And my therapist said this amazing term that I'd never heard before. These are bids for chaos, bids for war. And the best way to deal with bits for chaos and war is indifference. Indifference kills. Turn off. Indifference kills. Not literally. But if you can make it kill it literally, I will give you kudos. But first red flag is spotting there are bits for chaos, bits for war, which is about the same pointer as. It just felt like a power move versus a connection move. It just felt like a power move versus a connection move. Or it's also this, this is sort of the same pointer. Understand that it was emotional upset rather than a motivated rebellion. Understand that it was emotional upset rather than a motivated rebellion. Understand. Because sometimes we assume the person's falling apart because they're traumatized, but sometimes it's just a power move. Sometimes it's a bid for chaos, a bid for war. And your intuition will usually tell you this. Maybe your bleeding heart mind will say, oh, this person's traumatized, they need fixing. So when you see bids for chaos and bids for war, the answer is indifference, which kills psychologically, maybe. I don't know. Sounds good. I don't know with bits for chaos and war is indifference. Indifference kills. Turn off the light, walk out of the room. Indifference kills. 
I'm very familiar with bids for connection, which is a verbal or nonverbal action that tries to get your attention and it's indicative of a desire for connection. But bids for chaos? Bids for war? Fascinating. I'm not gonna so bids for connection, that's what codependents fall for because codependents fall for pity. So that's uh, here. You fall for sadness. So you're reading a move to correct you or attack you. You're reading anger as sadness to connect. So there's the emotional mystery. Someone corrects you, blames you, spends all their attention loving you by blaming you all of their lifetime pain is on your fault because you remind them of their father or their mother <laughs> you think it's connection <laughs> but it's a power move it's a correction it's a bid for war it's a bid for chaos it's a bid for dominance it's a power move It's a power move like this power move power move power move power move power move power move doesn't Valerie feel so special? <laughs> oh, yeah. So bids for chaos is often mistaken for bids for connection. That was also last week we sort of covered a different angle of that. You know, when I was in my early 20s, I had zero idea how to communicate vulnerably or deal with feelings. So I sent out many bids for war, many bids for chaos. Oh, this is a good example of bids for chaos and war. This might be triggering trigger warning. We need a meme for that. I'm just feeling really attacked right now. Feeling really attacked right now. I don't know right what triggered that person. I don't know if she's going to be I okay after wonder. this. Where is the healing on this? New people are getting confused. Okay, fine. If you want me to leave, I'll just leave. Fine, leave. Okay, fine. Fine, leave. Okay, I'm leaving. Fine. Just leave. Yeah, I I'm going. I heard you. Fine. Leave. Yeah, I'm leaving now. I'm gonna leave. Leave. Fine. Leave. Yeah, I'm gonna go. Fine. Leave. leave. Okay, I feel like I'm getting mixed messages here. Do you want me to leave or not? Oddly enough, I was telling a... What were the mixed messages? She said leave. <laughs> Am I the only one laughing hysterically at that? <laughs> no. It was... Tone of voice. Tone of voice. Tone of voice. So you have to spot the non-verbals. That's where the red flag's going to be. That's where the embedded messages are. That's where the insults are. That's where the... Seal an insult in the terminology. Seal an insult in the terminology. Seal. So we'll cover passive aggression maybe uh, pretty soon. Friend about this whole situation when it was going down. And she turned me on to the gray rock method is a technique for interacting with manipulative and abusive people. This strategy involves becoming the most boring and uninteresting person you can be when interacting with a manipulative person. Since people with manipulative personalities feed on drama, the duller and more boring you seem, the more you undermine their efforts to manipulate and control you. Indifference kills. Gray rocking is also supposedly a great technique to use when you have to see a toxic person on the regular. Maybe you're co-parenting, maybe they're your family or a coworker. Gray rocking can help when someone you've broken up with or turned down for a date isn't quite getting the message. This technique reminds me a lot of the meme. Yes, honey, give us nothing. Oh my God, I'm living for this lack of energy, baby. Oh, go girl. That's the goal to give the person nothing. No tells, no energy, no reaction, no trigger, because they feed off that. They play off that. That's part of narcissistic abuse. Get you reactive, get you triggered. So then now they can play off your triggers. So if you can spot your triggers as an internal red flag, heal your triggers on your own time with your own stuff, then now you don't have to be as hypervigilant guarding all the triggers outside of you.
So, learn to give nothing. Cool! Look at that face! Look at yeah. that flat line! Yeah. Flat line face! Flat line face! Flat line face! Flat line face! Flat line Grey rocking is about disengaging, disconnecting, and offering nada. So you can't feed any needs for drama or attention. Some people even go as far as recommending wearing boring clothes and no jewelry to maximize your grey rock. Honestly, it sounds like a like a hipster version of Zen to me, and I'm living for it. Gray rocking is about disengaging, disconnecting, and offering nada. Offering nada. Offering nada. 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 <laughs> Look, we have Jeff and Sophia and Ron. They're still out partying. Oh, Deidre's there too. <laughs> is Ania Khan in the back? That makes this group gigantic then. Igor, why don't you I leave? Know? Look at all the fun they're having. <laughs> oh. They left? just a short high. <laughs> they're Those bragging balls. about having social I had social a feeling time. Jeff was going to pick somebody up tonight. I just had a feeling he was going to go with someone from your meeting. <laughs> and he did. Yeah, he invited everyone having a good Saturday night out. Yeah, they have a lot oh, of... Oh, jealous. Things. That's great. Jealous. That's great. That's so good. I like that. That's nice. Oh, I think it's lucky. <laughs> it's weird watching presenting Nada. Yes, when it's presented dramatically. Well, if she presented at Nada, then no one would watch the YouTube video. So. It's and maybe hard to watch. She... <laughs> the, you know... It's hard to get in the mind, the action, not matching the words. Cause that's the problem with red flag to begin with. Oh, it's not in the same state. Ooh. Yeah. You have such I mean, high I get it for like social media and making a point, but on a more like, is this going to penetrate my mind and make it real for me? Not really, because it's so like the music and everything is just like, what are you talking about? You know? We'll try to intensify it for you, just for you. Yeah, it's easy, it's easy to pick up and and uh, <laughs> maybe do online watching something like that, but but it doesn't help you like understand what's going on this in the silent person's mind, while the other person might be saying stuff like, "Why aren't you talking? Are you what are you doing? Why are, why are you doing that right now? Do what are you what? trying to say to me? What do you you know like the 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 BPD reactions of like going nuts because you're not saying anything." <laughs> Oh, I don't have that, but I have a narcissist perspective of Grey Rock. How about that? <laughs> Kurt jumping the gun. Hey, I'm helping. Silence and gray, the Grey Rock uh, technique. Coming from a narcissist, it does work. It drives the narcissist absolutely crazy. It <laughs> is so bothersome, yo, because especially if you discard us, um, the narcissist is going to wonder what you are doing. Who are you? Who are you with? What? Why? What do we? What did I do to deserve this? And we'll start like kind of, I mean, blame inward, but then it start coming out as blame towards you. Like I did, we'll be like, I did everything I could for that for that woman. Uh, I she, I don't know what I did wrong. Like she, it's on her. What? Like she didn't deserve me. We start convincing ourselves that, but we'll still be wondering what you have going on. We'll c continue to reach out, find different avenues to reach out. The stalkerish, the crazy ones, they will stalk you. They might pop up at work. They might show up at your job, or you may show up at your house and things like that. So kind of be careful. But I mean, this is definitely the best method. One of the best methods, I guess. Now it goes both ways. So the. Abuser can also use silence against you, so it's not it's not a magic bullet that you can use. They use it just on you, and this is how a narcissist uses silence uh, weaponized. Narcissistic silence. Not the silent treatment, it's different. Narcissistic silence to me is that moment of silence that a narcissist gives you after saying something truly despicable, truly evil. They'll say something terrible about you, your family, your your kids, your mom, somebody, and then they'll get silent for a second. Just to make sure that what they said hit you correctly. That silence is to give you a chance to react, to, to portray that reactive abuse, to get out of character. And if you don't react the way the narcissist wants, it's going to say something worse. 
they'll keep poking you until you react the way that they want you to. So stay strong in those moments because that silence, like they'll say some truly evil and then just be like, look at you. If you don't react, something, something worse. Something worse. Something worse. Something worse until they get the reaction out of you. It's true. Because they're there to... They don't actually want to discuss anything. They're no. literally there to assault you. To assault mm. you. To assault you. So they're there to get under your skin. Under your skin. Under your skin. So they're there. Dagger driven into you. Dagger driven into you. Dagger driven into you. Make you have doubt. Have doubt. Have doubt. Laden with contempt. 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 Laden with contempt. 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 Laden. So that's what's happening underneath the surface. On the surface, they might look nice, they might be neutral, they might be polite, no one else sees it. But underneath is to sow doubt, to get underneath your skin, to try to get you to react, to try to find your buttons. So how many people know what word salad is? How many people want to see a good example of word salad that might be triggering? Because Laurie was complaining that the tone was off, so this would be a... I think it's an authentic word salad example. There's only one person, but <laughs> it's pretty good. But it might trigger the new people if they don't know what word salad is. Are you ready to see? Yeah, so word salad right. is a, a way uh, abusers can get out of... Uh, accountability they'll say things or the, to just confuse you take up time it's a way of talking that's uh, very chaotic and very unstabilizing that's why I'm setting this up for the new people to be concerned about your feelings because word salad it is very uh, disruptive or this example I think is maybe you guys would think it's nothing Have you been texting your ex-boyfriend? Well, ex-boyfriend... Okay, so the question is simple. Have you been texting your ex-boyfriend? The answer, someone keep track of it. Jonathan, you're good. So transcribe exactly everything that's said on the word salad, and we'll give you a test, okay? Are you ready? All right. Okay. Texting your ex-boyfriend. Well... Ex-boyfriends do exist, and ex-boyfriends become ex-boyfriends when a relationship has ended. But as I told you, I would never... Look at Jonathan's eyes. <laughs> <laughs> Did you give up already? <laughs> yeah, I'm just a little bit. I never actually deliberately not, not speak to an ex-boyfriend of mine, especially if they wanted to text me. You can text, you can email, calling. People phone call each other, right? You're not saying that people don't phone call each other, are you? Right? Because some people, they have ex-boyfriends and some people have ex-girlfriends. I'm not saying I am gay, but if I was a gay woman, would you disrespect me for being a gay woman? Why are you like this? What is the problem that you have with women texting their ex-girlfriends? And let's be sat there going... What? <laughs> Did you text your ex-boyfriend or not? So repeat the question. That seems sincere. What kind of answer will come? Jonathan, can you take notes for the second part? Yeah. <laughs> so you ask again and you get more punishment. So more word salad is coming. Oh, it's like a yes or a no. Well, yes, you can answer some questions yes and some answers you can answer no. That's called binary. Some things are a yes and some things are a no, but some things are non-binary and they're kind of in the middle and sometimes you just never need to know and you shouldn't be so tyrannical as to demand an absolute answer from somebody when it's not even a situation that they created. You created it. You're saying you need a no. No, no I'm not. Yeah, you did. You just said that you need a no. Look at that spin now if they're on the attack. That, that's like Darvo too. Word salad plus... Reverse victim. I've attack. had this conversation. It's great. Yeah. See, this is authentic. Feels very. He's talking from life experience. No, from me. Why do you need a no from me? What's what's this? What's this insane tyrannical need from you to have absolute answers? There is no absolute answer. Nobody even knows why we're here. I mean, we're just molecules, right? Two hours. 
two hours. It was exhausting. Two hours? Does that look like that's from a genuine story? He's actually endured two hours of that sort of word salad. So how do yeah, we give it's people a red flag? It's a yes, no question. It's a yes, no answer. You just don't know what to give. <laughs> My have version of this was, have you been lying to me? Yes or no? <laughs> <laughs> that was the response. <laughs> Just punish you for asking a question. Punish you for two hours. Yeah. What does Darbo stand for? Somebody fill in Natalie. Going, going. Defend, once. attack, reverse, victim, offense, offender. Something like that. <laughs> Close. Deny. It's deny. Is it this? Deny. deny. Oh, Holly, fail. Laura's got it there. Reverse victim and offender. And they do it so fast, so you think you have the edge. You got them. And then they just deny it. Attack you back with more energy. More offense, offended energy. And then now you're on the def defense, and they're playing the bigger victim. Sorry, what was Davo? Yeah, uh, Deeks interrupts. Um, deny, attack. Reverse victim and offender. Actually, it's just a victim card. So you don't even need to bother with denying. You just attack. You just get more offended. <laughs> and just attack back. You just ignore whatever they say. Or if Kurt talks a long time and gets everything perfect for Nahama. Nahama just changes. <laughs> so it doesn't even need to attack back. He just shifts topic and just abandons Kurt. <laughs> That's the silent treatment. See? <laughs> you spent all your time trying to pin them down. You finally get them down and you articulate. They sort of admit it. And then they just change subjects. So people got Darbo, or that caught Frank, Frankie's attention. Do you want more info? On yeah, it's uh, it's a big um, big bell. I used to call it going rogue um, when my ex would go rogue. So I'd be trying to deal with an issue that come up, and they would just be throwing out smoke bombs, and it, it just didn't make sense. The conversation. I didn't know what word sales were at the time, and. Yeah, this uh, Darlo thing is is bang on. It just hits a bell. I just see processes going rogue in the conversation. Oh, it makes rogue. sense. Yeah. All you have that to do sense, is it makes just, sense to uh, make. you just play victim. So you say. Like you're attacking me. Attacking me. Like you're they attacking wouldn't say me. On topic. I'm sorry, you're not being helpful to me right now. Being helpful to me just right say now. That. I'm sorry, you're not being helpful to me right now being helpful to me right now then lace it with contempt or you can say i'm just being really attack right now i'm really really, really attack, attack right now, now. Just my nervous really system is really right really, right really attack really high right now that's a softer form of darva but if you have something you have their button you act like you're offended you're the greatest victim and then you just go attack them or you can play tone policing you yeah. can't say that either. You yeah. can't say that either. Anything That's judgment. That's goes. judgment. I was policing her language in her yes. own judgment, in her yes. own judgment, in her yes. own judgment. I was policing. Well, we covered that before. I'm worried that new people are getting scared. Are you guys keeping up? Ah. It Could just you... shows you how hardcore the rest of us are, Dave. <laughs> Could you be more specific? Me about being hardcore? No, the confusion. <laughs> oh. about that. Shut up, Brad. Because <laughs> <laughs> that's part of not doing a red flag. I'll slow down and try to catch everyone up before going forward, where an abuser 
will just keep you always chasing and you never can keep up. The I can't unmute my PC. Then I can't unmute. <laughs> you, your microphone isn't working. Is that the issue? You can type it. There we go. Does that work? Oh, yes. Okay, I was trying to click on the unmute button and it was ignoring that, but I clicked at the bottom corner and that worked. Um, so what was confusing about that is, I guess those little outtakes of conversation, I'm not sure if when I'm hearing this, this is the, def the defender, the victim or the attacker. And so I'm hearing this snippet repeated, repeated, repeated. And it's like, is that an example of a good thing or is that an example of the bad thing? I, when the person was saying, I, I forget what that last person what? was just this saying. Even. Shouldn't really attack her right now. Shouldn't really, just shouldn't really attack her right now. Shouldn't really attack her right now. That's a victim plea. Just shouldn't really attack her right now. Shouldn't really attack her right now. Just shouldn't. That's a victim. Please didn't just write attack now. But That's the closed captioning move. is not translating very well. And some of the dialogue is coming through muddy and hard to hear. Uh, well, it's hard to capture live fire uh, power move or uh, manipulative move. So the ones I capture are live fire and then I have to work with what audio is. But yeah, she's saying she's feeling attacked. Both of them were saying, both of the last two memes, they, they were saying that they were feeling this attacked. This is also because okay, so Natalie was said, victim. what's Darbo? And then Frankie in. talked about Darbo, so I'm giving an example of people who are manipulative by saying they're a victim so that they can take control of the meeting or take control of the argument. On the surface, it looks like they're saying, I'm overwhelmed and I need help and I'm searching for connection. But really, they're trying to create chaos. That's why it feels like chaos to you, because that's yeah, so the you can, goal. If you, can <laughs> if you can imagine that those people prior to those phrases were just told, I don't know, something that they didn't agree with or they didn't want to respond to and their reaction was to flip it around and claim that they were being attacked or hear something stronger i'm trying to have a conversation i'm trying to have a conversation i'm trying to have a conversation do you hear the I'm tone trying to have a conversation do you I'm see the tension in her face i'm trying to have she's a conversation she's not trying to have a conversation i'm trying to have a conversation she's trying to control the conversation that's why red flags are hard to spot because on the surface, looks like the words are genuine, but the energy and the pattern of behavior for the whole meeting was not trying to have a genuine conversation. Yeah, that, that so, clip from that person was like two hours into a monologue when we were trying to give some feedback of some sort, and she sh tried to shut it down by saying, I'm trying to have a conversation, you know, like, you shut up and let me talk because it's my monologue, damn it. <laughs> so what's, well, so what's... The, the, the every, I think there were several times it was, I'm just trying to have a conversation. It was always at a very specific point. And the point was one of almost in, not entrapment deliberately, but just a point where we'd got to, it's like, you actually, actually, we actually now need to get to the, the nub of this. I'm just trying to have a conversation. It's like, no, no, you're not. It's a way to shut down the conversation. <laughs> It's a way to shut down what your she, voice, but it sounds yeah. innocuous. Mm -hmm. mm. What she was really wanting was a submission to something that she wanted. She wasn't looking yeah, she for wanted an apology. equal footing. Yeah, she wanted an apology. She wasn't looking for equal footing and have a conversation. There That's was... why. Power move, power move, power move, power move. Valerie, you were going to ask something. I think it just got answered. I was, tr I was trying to understand the motive from but i got it it's to shut down the conversation and that's uh the one meme we, we have for brad shut me down you talk get your space and time but you won't honor mine you won't honor mine shut me down you won't honor mine shut me down you talk get your space and time but you won't honor mine you won't honor that's part of the purpose of darvo you have a grievance you have what well, you want to be heard. You want to complain about something that's genuine. They flip it around. They shut you down. You're now on the defense. And then you forgot your grievance. 
And then when you remember five hours later, like on, oh my god, then you're angry, but then they they're gone. And then next time you get them, then you have like five grievances, and you try to bring it up. Then they do word salad and Darvo and punish you for three hours for bringing it up, and you still didn't get your voice heard because they're experts at shut me down. You talk, get your space and time, but you won't on a mind. You won't on a mind. Shut me down. You won't on a mind. Shut me down. You talk, get your space. So you had a grievance, they shut you down, now you're even more pissed because you think conversation's two ways. <laughs> and they shut you down, so you're upset about being shut down, and you're upset that you didn't get your grievance hurt. So now you're double pissed off. Yeah, I would uh, get into that conversation where I'd say, we're not ha having a conversation, and you know that, that wasn't the point that we were on. And then I'd start getting told that I wasn't... Um, that I'm not in charge of the conversation. That that it's that it's not a that it's not a monologue. And that I'm, they they flipped it around like I was the one that was demanding that we talk about this one thing, but I was following the conversation. Unfortunately, I made the mistake of following them down the path and reacted. And then they just wanted to flip it around and say, "Well, that's not it," and make some other you know go some other direction. And yeah, it happens. It's frustrating. Here's a meme to sort of show the energy behind it, because you're not going to be able to spot it by looking at the words. You have to feel the energy behind the words. You have to spot the tone. You have to feel your nervous system to see, to recognize their attacks. They're not sin sincere. Yeah. That's hard to do. Especially codependents tend to be conflict averse. They want everything slow and fair, but narcissist doesn't care. They're not playing by those yeah, rules. I, I would feel like I was being like I was just trying to nail Jello to a wall, and that's the only sense that I got was that this person was being slippery, but I but I was still stuck in the words, trying to follow like the logic of what they were saying when they were just throwing crazy shit out. It just it, it didn't have to. It, that's the word salad. It doesn't have to make any sense. It's just blah 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 blah. blah. And if you try to follow it, they've already won. Yeah. You're a slippery one. You're a slippery one. You're a slippery one. Reminds me. But when you catch them and you follow them and you call them out along the way, then they end up crying. Like, and they're still slippery. The then he's like, oh, or sad any person. Of, Let yeah. me rescue or any you. Number of, <laughs> any number of other defenses. Yeah, but they just certainly won't follow with it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, what made it more complicated was she would get you and then she'd get you and then that one and that one. So there was always someone else for her to jump with. So you wouldn't trail her. She would like get you off her her trail and go hang out with somebody else in a conversation. Yeah, but the way to short circuit her was to just, I think, well, where do we end up with? I'm confused. I'm sorry. I, I really just don't know what this is about. And I don't know what you want. And that's when she left because it, and there was that long silence, which felt like it went for hours. And then that she just gave up. She burnt out. Oh, Nahama. Yeah. It wasn't abusive. It was just, it just fizzled because there was nothing there. So this is what we yeah. covered in person. I don't know if it's going to make sense, but they want you to counter correct them or they want you to fall for connecting. If you stay in detection mode, what's happening? You stay neutral, cold, indifferent. Then you're not feeding them a reaction. But that's hard for codependents to do because when someone's attacking you with judgments and contempt and stuff to get underneath your skin, so they're there to get under your skin, under your skin, under your skin. So they're there to get under your skin, make under you your skin, have your doubt, skin. have so doubt, have get... doubt, make you have doubt, have doubt, have doubt, make you. It's hard not to try to connect and correct. You want to stay in neutral detective mode. And if you can't, record the conversations as much as you can, so then you can review it and learn their patterns. Because most abusers only have like two or three plays they did they make. So if you can record it, then next time you can do better. And that's a more reasonable goal. Don't try to beat them just yet.
you have to learn the game. So you have to take some blows and then slowly stay in detection mode because a lot of the stuff they're saying is just made up. There's no need to fight back. There's no need to correct them. There's no need to get into the blood wrestling. But it's hard. Yes. Why is it hard? Because codependents also have codependent supply. Does anyone know what codependent supply is? To feel validated and needed. Yeah, and feel important. Feel yeah. important. That's I could simplify need to be needed. Praise. Approval, praise, helper, whatnot. But then that falls into a new trap because it's a way of uh, transactional love. How does Brandon put it? The supply for co defendants is uh, scenarios that require fixing. Um, so our um, supply is to be needed, is to be the one who is the rescuer. If you can recognize this as an addiction, and I encourage you to, look at where in your life you're acting like you're addicted to fixing things just so that you can play out the rescue fantasy and do see it as being the um, symmetrical comparative mirror image to narcissism. It's a really unhealthy thing. It's, this is not how a healthy sovereign adult uh, goes through life. So, so what do we gain from the rescue fantasy? You're being passive aggressive by directing your correction, <laughs> by fixing the other person's feelings. It's a way Can to you say that again? Fear. Yeah. So let's go back to the basics. Codependence. This is codependency, ladies and gentlemen. It is a neurotic drive. No choice, no freedom. To serve, to serve, to submit, to fawn, to supplicate. Why? It is a terror of negative emotions in yourself and in others. We focus on the negative emotion, but what's the first word there? First word is terror of negative emotions. So that's an inability to stay in fear. So the other person has a negative emotion. You fix it. You rescue their negative emotion. So you're using anger to correct their negative emotion as a displacement tool for discomfort of what if, the fear of the unknown, the fear of your world falling apart, the fear of some parent figure getting angry, hitting things and blowing things up. So it was a genuine fear when you're growing up. And it's still a pattern that's in you. But now as an adult, you're overreacting to repetition, compulsion, old patterns of terror, of negative emotions. And then what you do, or what codependents do, is they correct, they fix the emotion. They don't even realize it's anger. But if you're jumping into someone's world who hasn't asked for help, who's not saying they need help from their emotions, you preemptively jump in. You're invading their world by using anger to correct their emotion. And a codependent will say, oh, I'm connecting. This is my way of connecting. But are you connecting? You're fixing their emotions. What? How are you showing you? How are you meeting them here, person to person, vulnerably? You're the rescuer, top down. That's your way of connecting. Was that too fast? Was that too heavy, Valerie? Jonathan? It was perfect, D. Thank you. Because until a codependent owns how they're using your anger indirectly, you're going to be stuck with the addiction because using anger is fun. It gives you feels like power. It's something. So we continue those patterns, but you're using it 
pa passive aggressively because you're rescuing somebody first and then the secret contract is that they reciprocate and when they don't reciprocate then codependents have resentment and bitterness and betrayal say so i'm a nice the person I so i want you to be a nice person well the other person says yeah you're a nice person thank you i don't need to be a nice person back but the problem is when you get when you wake up to this as i have because downstairs is a house guest who's doing this and I'm doing gray rock, dull, boring. And the more I do that, the more intense it's getting. And we're, we're on, it's like this at the moment. It's great fun. <laughs> because they're but doing it's power My anger, I can feel my anger wanting to correct and I'm not doing it. <laughs> So you stay in neutral, you don't give them anything, but then they're going to escalate because they want yeah, to feel you out. Yeah, it, it, it's just going up and up and up and up. Mm. I think I'll go home tonight. <laughs> <laughs> so another problem of uh, codependence is a lot of therapists are codependents. So if you go to a therapist to get your codependence healed, a lot of them are not in a position to help you because they have the same problem you have. And here's an example from David Burns, uh, the founder and one of the early pioneers of CBT, who now teaches Team CBT. The urge to help your patients is the cause of practically all therapeutic failure. What would happen if we jumped in uh, instead of what we just did and said, Zach, I have all these tools to help you. I'm going to use exposure and response prevention. I'm going to show you how to talk back to all of these negative thoughts. I'm really going to help you get over your OCD. What would happen? No, no, sir. Uh, <coughs> uh, there's too many good reasons for me to hang on to it. Now, this is a good point, which I'll try to cover in Act 2. Or I think we're in Act 2. We'll try to cover by Act 3 that... If you impose your will on somebody, there's a counter will, there's a counter energy movement that just is impulsive, almost faster than impulsive. And once you're dealing with someone who has a counter will, it's a lost cause because you're not dealing with the person. You're only dealing with the person's counter opposition. So codependents, therapists who try to fix, you hit their counter will. And they just instantly reject the help. But I, I don't want that. You, you get huge resistance. A absolutely. How would you put it? Fight against? As therapists and really human beings, most of us really, really want to put the other person at ease. We want the other person to feel better. Person to feel better. See, now that's her motivation, not the person. So a lot of therapists and codependents are not comfortable with someone else suffering someone else emoting so you're fixing them out of your personal need that's where it's a passive aggressive move you're correcting their feelings but then you're telling yourself a story that you're a helper you're connecting you're not acting out of your terror <laughs> you're correcting their feelings because this was your old pattern of surviving as a childhood or wherever you learned the pattern who knows as a therapist, I feel like that's my job, that's my role, that's why you're coming to see me. I got all these great tools, let me fix you, let me fix you, let me fix you, right? So it's really hard to resist the urge to kind of jump in and fix your patient or the other person even that you're, you're spending time with. And instead to kind of sit back and paradoxically to voice good reasons not to change and, and have that person kind of chase you in a way and, and argue for change. It's just very hard to resist the urge to help someone, maybe even against their will, even against their will, even against their will. Against Absolutely. Their will. And the way I would put it is that the urge to help your patients is the cause of practically all therapeutic failure, all therapeutic failure. Most therapists are addicted to helping <laughs> your patients. Right. And that's why you get stuck, get stuck, stuck, stuck. Let me fix you. Let me fix you. And that's why you get stuck. Let me fix you. That's the underlying message of all the words 
is let me fix you, let me fix you, let me fix you, and then it's a willpower versus willpower. And the therapist might be able to overwill you, but then the narcissist abuser is a better manipulator, and they're going to override any work you do in therapy because <laughs> they have faster impulses. They can so use in tone better. That so internally for codependence, um, it's being the, the red flag that's happening inside is to be with um, the terror. As to stay it, in detection I mean, he, mode, ultimately yeah. to be calm. That's when they say calm, the pointer is to calm your nervous system. And my pointer is to say, stay in your fear mode, which is to detect or be a detective, be neutral, go meta, be observer, stay detecting. But if you're caught by anger and rage and you want to fix as a passive aggressor, in today's meeting, I said, if the person's poking you and you're poked and you know this is going to last two hours and eventually they're going to blow up, just blow up right there. Save yourself the time of two hours back and forth. You know they're going to just wear you down. Just blow up and go crazy once you start knowing you have a loose battle. I have to admit that that's where I'm at at the moment. <laughs> if, um downstairs. It's just, it's just about ready for me to go, hey, listen, I'm fucking sick of this crap. <laughs> yeah. What if you're addicted to detective mode? Hey, you're addicted to oh, staying detective in detective mode? mode? Yeah. Oh, I, can, I can observe. I can observe what's going on. I've got, oh, you wouldn't believe, oh, and this happened and that happened and, oh, rescue me. And I'm just sitting there going, but it's making me angrier and angrier until I'm either going to snap or leave one of the two because that's all that's left. So you have to balance detective mode with some sort of correction. For codependence, you might want to try to correct the other person's feelings. Instead, you correct your own map of the world. So your expectations of how people should act in a utopia world probably should be updated. You're expecting too much from your abuser if you've known them your whole life for many years that they're always impulsive and they never change and you still want them to change. So it's time for you. I to don't want them to them change. Up. I just want to, I just want to know what they're going to do next. It's almost like at this point, well, like they don't know what they're going to do next. Sorry. How do you the know? Dots. That's where you have to use your sadness. <laughs> God, not the sadness. I like angry baby. I don't want to be sad baby ever. You've got to have all three of these emotions to be fully human. Mm -hmm. So yes, if you, Divorce yourself from one of them, any one of them, you're not going to be able to navigate the world well. Busted. We'll try to custom make something for you to avoid connection, but I'll have to work on that. That's not today's topic. <laughs> Oh, we have Celeste. Welcome, Celeste. Someone I thank you. We're just doing live fire exposure, and then we'll have the formal portion recorded so you can review afterwards. Hopefully it turns out okay. I don't know. So what have we covered? We covered a little bit about Grey Rock, uh, Word Salad, Codependent supply, the urge to fix, and little tidbit of counter will. But I'll cover that later. Let's go into ambient abuse. Are people ready? Ambient abuse, where I never say that there's anything wrong. I just meta communicate wrongness with every single breath I take. I just make you feel super uncomfortable, super judged without content. So there's no words communicating it. I'm now just signaling to you that I'm not happy with you. Ambient abuse, what does that do to you? You will say, what am I doing wrong? What am I doing wrong? What is wrong with me? If you have good boundaries, you'd be like, this person's being shitty with me. This is not good boundaries because it doesn't work. <laughs> Don't give that example. But what's happening 
with ambient abuses, they're sending tons of corrections to you through meta communication, through nonverbals and posture and tone. They're trying to send tons of judgment and you're a terrible person. How dare you? And then you're actually detecting it properly. But without trusting your intuition, you're overriding the intuition or you're freaking out because maybe it reminds you of childhood or something or your past is abusive. Yeah. But if you try to connect, see, so you should stay and detect and correct. But if you try to connect, you think it's a, a connection move, not a power move. It just felt like a power move versus a connection move. It just felt like a power move versus a connection move. It so if you mistake it as a connection move instead of a power move, you try to explain and you try to build a bridge, they just want to make you feel bad. So you can try to connect, but also you could try to detect by saying, I feel this, I feel nervous because of this, bring it out into the air. They'll still deny it, but at least you'll feel a little better because you're sharing your, your intuition. If you stuff your intuition, then now you're still lost, which gives them the lead. Why are you being shitty with me? So therapists will say, ask directly. Right? Guess what happens when you ask directly? They punish you. <laughs> Get ready for punishment. Why are you being shitty with me? And then I would say, of course, I'm not being shitty with you. Why are you being so confrontational? My God, you're so paranoid. You're really insecure. That's like that thing you told me about with your mom that you shared with me and your best friend that you fell out with. I think you need to see a counselor. And then I just start picking away at your insecurities. Picking away at your insecurities. That's their goal. If it's a power move. It just felt like a power move versus a connection move. It just felt like a power move versus a... So they're there to get under your skin. Under your skin. Under your skin. So they're there. They don't actually want to discuss anything. They are no. literally there to assault you. To assault you. Laden with contempt. 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 Laden with contempt. So the red flag is spotting. Is this a power move? Or is this a connection move? Because Val is our resident expert. It just felt like a power move versus a connection move. It just felt like a power move versus a connection move. It just felt like a power move. And sometimes it's obvious. This was, we got Tanya to admit it. I was policing her language in her yes, own judgment. That's in a power her move. Judgment in her yes. own judgment. I was policing her language in her yes. own judgment. In her yes. own. You yes. can't say that either. You yes. can't say that either. You yes. can't say that either. Anything that's goes. judgment. Anything that's goes. judgment. Anything that's goes. judgment. Anything that's judgment. Those are power moves. Anything that's policing. Those are power moves. Those are passive aggressive or aggressive moves to try to control conversation. It's not connection moves. Now, they can be if they're trying to build a bridge, so you have to look at the context. But generally, people who are trying to stifle conversation, they're trying to do, essentially, the energy is this. Shut me down. You talk, get your space and time, but you won't honor mine. You won't honor mine. Shut me down. You won't honor mine. Shut me down. You talk, get your space and time, but you won't honor mine. You won't honor So if you don't feel heard, you feel shut down from your instincts. then that's your instinct saying that it's more of a power move instead of a connection move. That's a red flag you can try to try out. Raging, shaking with rage, and they're, say, half a meter away from you, looking at you, and you say, are you okay? And they go, yes, I'm fine. Everything is okay. But they're like, yes, I'm fine. Everything is okay. <laughs> Not only are they in a rage, but it's clear that they're in a rage with you. It's weird and it's very, very stressful because you're getting one signal, which is there's a problem, then you ask for... So one signal that there's a problem, that's what you're getting. Then you ask and you get a different signal. Uh, the closure of knowing that there's a problem and you don't get it. 
So you're like, okay, I'm getting two communications here from one person. One communication is there's a fucking big problem here. The second communication negates the first communication, says there's no problem here. And a third communication is if you keep asking me, then you'll have a big fucking problem and it'll be your fault. And you're like, oh, (laughs) that's crazy making. Ambient abuse, picking away at your insecurities. Laden with contempt and always from the presupposition that you are absolutely guilty, absolutely guilty, absolutely guilty. Because the goal is to send these correction daggers straight into your soul where it hurts the most and then stab you and twist it. That's the energy of the attacks. You feel it. They deny it. Darbo, first part of Darbo. And then they say just enough language to make you confused enough to think that it's a connection move. It's not to make you doubt that it's a power move. It just felt like a power move versus a connection move. It just felt like a power move versus a connection. But the goal is to shut you down. Shut me down. You talk, get your space and time, but you won't on a mind. And the goal is to... They don't actually want to discuss anything. They are literally there to assault you. To assault you. To assault you. They don't... Once you learn how to recognize an assault, then you can give up, leave, not continue, because you're going to... If you continue thinking it's a connection, then it's going to be three hours <laughs> of beaten down assault. And then you're shut down, and then you're chasing forever, and it's a lovely relationship. Very intense. <laughs> so was that too triggering? Are people able to keep up? It was triggering. Um, it brings you back to being a child. Like my mother used to stare at me with that look of disgust, contempt, and I felt so worthless. And then if I answered her, she would attack me and I would answer her back and then she would attack me more. So now I'm understanding when I'm in these situations, I'm becoming a child and the other person is her. And I got to recognize that's not taking place right now. I'm an adult and I'm different. But in that split second, you do. I mean, I go back to being a child. Mm -hmm. Right. Just like that. Right. Even with the looks and the body language, she used to do that too. This was really helpful. This helped me a lot. Wow. Oh, it wasn't even for you, Debbie. Oh, but it helped. Maybe it was. It, it, Maybe it, I was dreaming just to customize for you. No, it know. helped the part, <laughs> not the word part, but the body language part, that yes. look of contempt, like I'm um, disgusting piece of shit. Like she would give me that look like how like I'm so disgusting. And that's the look that freezes me when I see it. It's her face. That look seeing. that has contempt. Yeah. Laden with yeah. contempt. 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 Laden with contempt. Contempt. Yeah. Contempt. Laden with contempt. It's not the words. The word now I got a little clearer. It's not the words. It never was the words. I thought it's it was the, the energy, words. the look. Look, it's yeah. the mm-hmm. energy, not the words. Wow, that was big. (laughs) And that means you're human. When someone sends hatred and contempt down your throat, you're supposed to feel bad. That's being human. Yeah. But now you see it's a power play. You can see it's not personal. But part of the way why it works is because they make it highly personal. Yeah, and the narcissist does it with the looks. I don't think I ever... Yeah. I don't think I ever fell for the words. I Like thinking back it's now. It's not about the words. Word. It's the look. It's the look, but it's also the style of the words. So they yeah. don't.
they don't answer what you're saying. They talk, they distort what you're saying. So this is yeah. another yeah. perfect example of passive aggression. Yeah. Of how they do it. I don't know if Richard Grant has done any more on this, but this is pretty good. A passive aggressive attack. People deliberately pretend that they didn't know what was being said to them to get people into a cycle of trying to explain themselves. And they explain it to them again, and they respond exactly the same way they did the first time. Is that your man? As though they haven't. This is Richard Grannon. We, we follow him. And an older gentleman friend. Oh, it's just clips I use. He's from the UK. He sort of is similar in our mind, our thought mind. But passive aggression, Debbie just mentioned, you kept explaining yourself, and then she could just keep attacking you. This is a pattern of passive aggression. Codependent sees that as an opportunity to explain and connect, but they misread that it's a power move. It's not for connection. It just felt like a power move versus a connection move. It just felt like a power move versus a connection move. It just but this tactic is so common in online conversations, uh, <laughs> trolls, and also in Zoom meetings. Even read your explanation. They have. They have read it. And they can see the sincerity there. And they know exactly what to do with it. They're like, I'll just keep pretending that I don't know what this is really about. They pretend not to understand what's there. They deliberately misinterpret. They deliberately misinterpret. You just start talking fait accompli as though that was what they meant. As though that was what they meant. So they learn how to respond in pure confidence, pure tone to something totally different from than what you said. <laughs> totally distorted. It's amazing. It's beautiful. I can't fight back when you straw man me because that's not even a point I made anyway. But the purpose is... And that's the simplification of straw manning and why we get pissed off with straw man. Because... That's not even a point I made anyway. They're making a straw man attack you for the straw man. You can't a attack back because you didn't make that <laughs> point. Then you're just chasing and saying, I said something different. I didn't say that. I said this. And then you're just arguing what you said. And they're just attacking you with pure contempt on cycle. That's their passive aggression. But the purpose is chaos. The purpose is to upset you. And I'll keep pretending that this. And that's partially why this meeting is chaotic, to give you a simulation of chaos. Because if you're learning this where I say, here's the 10 steps of Darvo, this is deny, this is attack, this is reverse and victim, and you feel it in this very organized, structured way, that is not how Darvo works out in live fire. That is so true. And this has been really triggering. <laughs> um, so I feel like I do pretty good in general, but when it comes to my adult children, this is like a daily thing. And it, so, yeah, it's, it's a lot. Oh, okay. We'll try to cover some counter tactics. A lot of it is once you see that it's a power move and it's not a connection move, you can stop trying to explain yourself. You can stop trying to defend yourself because it's not about, it's not about you. It's about them needing to dump their toxic shit on somebody. It's about them being insecure. Actually, the game is that they're insecure. They're upset. They're fragile. So they want you to feel fragile so that they feel superior. So it's a, they're coming from a place of weakness. They're coming from a place of neediness. So if you could get to the level of recognizing that when someone is sending excess correction that they need connection that's partially why codependents try to seek conne connection but they need connection with their emotions they don't need connection with you fixing their emotions they need to suffer because they have a backlog of grief and guilt and all this other crap they haven't faced because they've been able to dump it on their victims 
So if you can stay in detective mode, recognize the attack is not about you, even though they're shoving daggers down your heart and down your throat. feels like it's about you. They just want to dump their insecurities. This was a hard is, point to say. This, is, yeah. this is helpful for me, too, because I'm, I'm about to... My mom's about to move back to town, and she's she's like, can't avoid your mom. I can't avoid my mom. She's 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 not a nurse, but she is like a codependent that I I was destined to become. Man, she baked cookies for everyone. Like if they're sick, she she's constant motion, <laughs> helping, 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 helping. And when so when she moves back to town here, I I, I know she wants to pull me along on this codependent journey of like helping the people or helping some and I can't so I'm considering these strategies because I uh the righteousness that goes along with codependency I know that feeling I know that feeling I'm not I'm not, <laughs> I'm not a stranger to it but like it's hard to call your mother on that um my, my dad just died in December um mm. and so she's she's kind of alone now and to like content with with and i'm her, my sister completely is ignores her well she, oh man sister okay so yeah thank you for being here for me to consider this because also as a therapist like my yeah i have that fixing agenda totally <laughs> um, but i also know that it's also a, a, a bonus if i can rein it in to help people not feel like freaks because they're acting freaky like codependence you know but i'm still getting better at doing that um i it's not yeah i'm i'm here well i think if uh you stay in detection mode and detection mode is you can note what you see happening and you can still continue your old patterns so if your mom wants to drag into cookie making or whatever, you can just name it and still do it. Yeah. And that'll start giving you a bit more space in the, this loop. You're still going to have the feelings because I'm still having the feelings as well, but I'm just not biting or taking the bait or trying to fix anything to despite the fact I've been asked to fix about 500 things in the last two days. Is it, are you good at IT, Brad? No idea. Can you help me with, I really don't know. See? I didn't say I was fixed. I didn't <laughs> say I was fixed. Anything to slow things down and develop more awareness, slowly you'll get better at this cycle and then Boundaries come naturally afterwards. But where shall we go? Um, how many people know what counter will is? Oh, Chantal does. Wow. Impressive. No one else knows counter will. Anyone have a guess? I'm surprised Gordon Newfield, he talks about it. I think he's the only uh, school of therapy that officially talks about it. And this is a trap that codependents fall into uh, when you're dealing with someone in counter role. And it's also a trap that some codependents try to become more counter-dependent. So it's not all codependent, it's not all counter-dependent. Everybody has a bit of both. But the counter-dependent side is the side that tends to attack uh, your humanity. You try to suppress your emotions, suppress your vulnerability, and that's a strategy to harden up against future attacks. But the counter-dependent posture means that you sacrifice connection, you sacrifice your humanity. But it's a very uh, effective posture because its counter-will is a very easy defense. But also, it's useful to recognize this when you're dealing with someone who's using counter will on you to just give up. 
because you're not, they're not talking an argument. They're not even doing a power play. They just don't want you to leave. So they're just fucked with you for two hours because counter will is easy. It's fun. It's, uh, whatever. So. Let's see how this lands. Every child possesses the instincts to do the opposite of what is expected. It couldn't surprise us to do the opposite of what is expected. And yet somehow it does. We assume that a child is doing this on purpose. Look, they're still it having is, fun. It is instinctive, driven leave. by deep instinct, by deep emotion. If we push the wrong buttons in a child, or if these emotional buttons are pushed in us, it calls forth this reaction, uh, which we've dubbed counter will shape. So if you impose your will, or someone imposes their will on you, just like the David Burns video, therapists that try to fix, they're going to run into counter will. Because until the patient owns that it's their values and goals and their purpose, there's a personal agency part of yourself that's going to say, fuck off, <laughs> that's going to resist somebody else's willpower. It's something that's instinctive and based in your childhood. So this is counter will. Hey, the counter will instinct is a defensive reaction to perceived control and coercion. In other words, nobody likes to be pushed around. Nobody likes to be pushed around. So a narcissist can keep poking you, poking you until your counter will reacts then you overblow your counter will, and then they call you out and say, see, <laughs> you're an abuser, you're messed up, you're crazy, you need to go into therapy. But it's a natural instinct of counter will. And then when you try to get them to be accountable for something, their counter will just makes up excuses because all they have to do is make you wrong. So that's a different thing. They are... I need for you to be wrong, and I don't want you to go. It's about my need. I need for you to be wrong, and I don't want you to go. It's about my need. So they'll just make up a counter to make you wrong, and then you're wanting to argue back, so then you don't leave, and they can make you wrong. So that's their goal. That's the narcissist's goal. I need for you to be wrong. And I don't want you to go. It's about my need. You're not actually wrong. They don't care. They just need you to be wrong. <laughs> they come up with a counter, make you wrong. Then you want to keep arguing. Then you don't leave. So win win from them. And they're using this impulse, which is very fast. A counter will is deeply rooted in instinct and emotion. Every single child, every single adult possesses this family of instincts, it throws a monkey work into parenting. And the very fact that we impose our wishes, desires, expectations calls forth a defensive reaction. Uh, what in the world could this be about? Well, one way of looking at it is it's simply an expression of the basic universal principle that for every force there's an equal and opposite counterforce. The greatest force impinging upon a child is the will of the adults who are responsible for that child. The more forceful we are in communicating our will concerning their behavior, the more likely it will call forth counter will. It is right there. So the more energy you're feeding somebody's encounter will they can take that same energy and use that counter will back so when you're having an argument and you feel them getting stronger as you're getting stronger you're fighting counter will and there's just no win because it's just counter will it's just an inherent impulse that's very strong counter will is not to be messed with
their behavior, the more likely it will call forth counter will. It is important, and I'll keep reiterating this, very important that in our interaction with children we keep counter will in mind. If we don't, again, we are going to trip all over this and actually be counterproductive and, and our interactions will backfire. Our interactions will backfire, 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 backfire. And then here's an example of Lee Hammock describing how much he likes maybe using counter will. So most narcissists and toxic people do not care about being right. They care about the argument and the fussing and the fighting. And if you're new here, I'm a narcissist. I have narcissistic personality disorder. So when you're dealing with a narcissist and trying to confront them with the truth, trying to prove a point to them, that does not matter to them. The truth literally does not matter to a narcissist. They like the fussing and the fighting and throwing you off the truth. You can say something like, hey, babe, the, the sky is so blue today. And they'll say something like, Actually, it's uh, light green. And then you, knowing that the sky is blue, want to prove a point to them, and y'all end up fussing and fighting and arguing, and no resolution. They still don't care that the sky is blue. They cared about the argument and being able to trigger you, being able to throw you. They cared about the argument. They cared about triggering you. They don't care about the words of the argument. That's part of recognizing this red flag, that it's a power move. It's not about the words of the argument. It's not about the story. That's another pointer. You off. But that's why I say that most times when you're dealing with a narcissist, the best way to engage with them, if you have to engage with them, is straight to the point. Letting a narcissist talk to you too much ends up with you being gaslit, manipulated, and typically it ends up in reactive abuse. If you don't know what reactive abuse is, is when a narcissist pushes your buttons and makes you explode and look like the crazy person in an argument. Or I'll be able to demonstrate this in a couple of hours for you all if I stay here. <laughs> so counter dependency is sort of underlooked in the codependent world, even in the narcissist world. I think it's sort of part of the schizoid response, which is also not really addressed in therapy. Schizoid is a big complicated word, so then it gets in trouble. This person, I think, is more counter-dependent than codependent. Maybe we'll play the first two minutes of this. When was the last time you wrote down that you felt sad? Mm. I can't. I can't remember. Mm. I can't remember. When was the last time you wrote down that you were afraid about the future? Uh. Probably sometime last week. I, I, yeah. Uh, the issue. So sadness, no connection. Anger, last week. The issue that you have at the moment is that your superego is actually not letting you be honest with uh, the emotions that you're feeling. So it's actually blocking access to certain emotions. It's like you're allowed to feel this range to here and no mm. more. Any emotions that relate to vulnerability. You're not allowed to feel them, so you don't get to access them. So this whole thing of being a tough soldier, you, you really would do well to uh, to drop it. It's helped you survive up until now. I appreciate that. Anybody want to look at the eyes and see whether there's sadness or fear in her eyes or micro expressions? You're glued to this life raft, but you are glued <laughs> to this life raft. I don't want to be glued to it. I don't want I mean, you I either. Want, There's a nice choice. fucking island over there, and you need to swim yeah. there, but you you don't get to take the life raft with you. Yeah. Uh, I think I I think I have a fear that because you know I've I've been close to having breakdowns in my life. I think I have a fear that I won't be able to function if I really, if I really go like I won't be able to get out of it. Like the the, the emotions won't, I won't move through them. That they'll just drag me down. Sadness will drown her because that's what sadness is, is supposed to do. <laughs> I think there's a definitely a fear of that. I'm certain that there's a fear of that. Mm -hmm. I have no doubt in my mind that you're terrified that the emotions will wash you away. But that's no. what happens when we live a lifetime in denial of our emotions. All right. So to quote you, you know how you say in your videos, no one's coming to save you. Look at her pivot. 
now she's got some energy because she had a counter. <laughs> this is her counter will. See how quick counter will is? And she instantly had energy because it works against stuffing emotions. It works as fake connection. No one's coming to save you. You have to do it yourself. Mm -hmm. That's like what my superego tells me like my whole life. Mm -hmm. No one's going to help you. No one's going to, no one's going to come save you. No one's going to, no one's going to, you know, if you fall apart, tough shit, kid, you're on your own. Oh, yeah. So we can state a fact and have it be a fact and then follow it with another conclusion. So mm -hmm. when I say nobody's coming to save you, the conclusion is you need to save yourself. Yeah. Your super ego says nobody's coming to save you. So tough shit, kid. I didn't say that. See what he did? So he stayed in detection mode and then explained the difference to point out a correction to what her add-on was. So she heard something with the your shit kid, whatever, which is not what the message was. But he said it in a neutral detective mode. Name it to tame it using Dan Siegel's uh, acronym or pointer. Buddhist noting. I, I did, or my mom did. Um, definitely my mom, but uh, yeah. It's it's. Mm. It's not. Nobody's coming to save you. So tough shit, kid. That's 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 not it. Uh. Yeah, it's 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 just hard. It's hard to it's hard to. She's trying to slip away. See the counter will the dissociation. These are defenses against feeling. That's the counter dependent strategy. Uh, like half my family's dead now. It's like I'm. I feel pretty much on my own in the world. So. Yeah. I think if you want to connect with another human being, uh, we need to really look at like. The, the self image and the uh, the super ego issues. I don't think your super ego is letting you consider the possibility of connecting with another human being because it doesn't want you to feel invulnerable. Uh, sorry, it doesn't want you to feel vulnerable. So it's made you kind of a little obsessive with ideas of invulnerability. <laughs> You're very attached to your invulnerability, but these are fantasies. That it's not. It's not real. Hmm. Well, I actually, um, I, I did the. <clears throat> See how long she let it sink in. <laughs> it's not real. Well, I. <laughs> let me see how fast she pivots. See, so, so she's taking it in right there. <laughs> vulnerability. You're very attached to your invulnerability, but these are fantasies. That... Is that like terror? <laughs> See how fast she pivots on it, though. That's because counter will is fast. It's a, it's a good defense. It's not. It's not real. Hmm. Well, I actually, um, I, I did the healing the super ego course too, but I'm, I'm like going back through that again. So, like with the exercise, the the kindness cycle, and and trying to connect with that. So counter will is no joke. So if you're dealing with counter will from someone else, realize that that's a sign of survival. You're not going to beat somebody's counter will with will. I guess you could counter will the counter will. That could be kind of fun. But... <laughs> If I run into someone's counter will, I try to usually back up. It's autopilot. People's counter will is like a super ego introduction. In interject is just super fast. Um, I can't wrap it up nice and easy since it's 8.55. So we'll give you tips on how to Darvo better. How about that? Oh, Frankie's gone. It was all for Frankie. You can watch it in the recording then. So this is how to Darvo. Two minutes. Oh, there he is.
<laughs> two minutes. <laughs> two He's minutes. Just having a wait. He's gone for two minutes. The video's two minutes. Okay. Wash your hands, Frank. <laughs> Any clarifying questions, compliments, critiques, insults, counter will responses? <laughs> it's interesting learning the terminology for all of these things because I have experienced it all so viscerally <laughs> in experience. And I know the feeling of being blindsided in the conversation that something spun out of control, but not knowing how, and the breakdown of being able to analyze it when it's happening is something that I don't know how, um, how you get good at that. Like right now I'm cut off from the person who was my abuser, mm -hmm. um, which has been a blessing. Um, but at some point she's going to come back and I'm going to have to deal with it. So I'm trying to see if I can prepare myself by learning and making sure that I haven't internalized stuff. Um, so anyway, it, it's been very helpful. Thank you. Don't worry. Abusers will find you. There's no need to. <laughs> yes. They'll come in your life. They'll be in their building. So you'll get opportunities to practice. Just the more you get exposure and the them. more you have the labels, you see the patterns, then you'll be able to do better next time you have your abuser. There's you know, tons of them out there. No, no need to rush. Take your time. Okay, we have Frankie. We're going to close out with JP Sears. This is how you use Darvo. Here's some tips. Three steps, I think. I've been having life-changing results since I learned how to get offended. Now when people don't see things the way that I see them, I just get offended. And it teaches them how not to see things from their point of view. There's three easy steps to getting steps. offended by anything. Step one, listen to what someone says and then selflessly make it all about you by taking it personally, even if it has nothing to do with you. I really want you to have a great life. You're assuming my life isn't good enough the way it is? How dare you? Step two, you want to create a large amount of tension inside your body. You really want to concentrate on bringing the tension to your stomach, your chest, and your face. How are you doing today, JP? I'm offended that you would have to ask. Step three, now project outrage onto the other person. This will make it seem like you're getting rid of the tension inside your body, but it actually drives it down deeper inside you. And because it stays there, it'll make it even easier for you to get offended next time. I'm offended that you would wear that shirt. I'm actually a little offended by that. I'm offended that you're offended by that. Since I've learned how to get offended, I bring huge amounts of joy to everyone in my life. People feel like they're free to just be themselves when they're around me. I'm just happy I can make such a big difference in the world. I think she's a pretty attractive woman. I'm offended that you would think I'm attracted to women. Aren't you attracted to women? Yeah, but you have no right to just assume that. You have no right to, you have no right to, you have no right to just assume that. So you can practice being the offended person guy pretty easily. You just. I'm offended you have any assumptions. <laughs> and you just use your counter will to make up an offense. And once you got them on defense, keep going. Attack maliciously. Ooh. Where am I? Out there. Look at that, nine o'clock. Of the year, of the year, that's all, folks. <laughs>